served in Vietnam. But at this time, Bobby was about 17 years old. Looked like uh, He looked to be about 23 or 24. And he was a fighter. He was a street fighter. He was bad news. And that was uh, during the height of the Vietnam War uh, and the Ballad of the Green Berets, you know, put silver wings on my son's chest, make him one of America's best. I mean, that was the song, brother. And, <clears throat> and for, for, I think, I think a dollar and a half, he bought a Green Beret. And he put it on. I want you to know, it looked good. We were at a football game. Now, our football, our football games, we, I, I, that's where football got to start. Our high school football stadium seats 26,000 people. And we're at a football game one night, and, and, we're, and he's walking through the crowd. And I mean, Bobby's just, you know, green bray on his side and, and kind of parting, you know. The people are just kind of, and, and as we're walking through this crowd, I saw over there, over there, there was a black guy buying some hot dogs at a hot dog stand. He wasn't as big as Bobby. And I saw he's paying for these hot dogs, having to see Bobby coming. And I'm telling you, he left his hot dogs, he left his change, and he starts coming through the crowd like this. And I saw it. Bobby didn't see it. I saw it. I saw, I, and I thought, this guy is going to regret what he is about to do. I mean, I've seen Bobby fight two guys at one time and win. And this guy stepped across Bobby's path. And when he stopped, when he stopped Bobby, I mean, Bobby just stopped. And I watched his face turn beet red. His hands went to fists. And I thought, this guy, it's what we call in Ohio a happening. <laughs> and we're about to have a happening. And Bobby just, just, he was like this. And this, you know what this black guy said to him? He pointed up that green braid. He said, you earned that? Man, when he said those words, I saw the color drain out of Bobby's face. I saw his hands relax. And he went, uh, no. Take it off. I earned mine. Bobby went, I never saw that thing again. That's what happens. See, we think because you can just strut around, get you an interleaf Bible, get one and, and throw a bunch of notes in it. I knew a guy, he got his Bible interleafed, and every time a preacher got done preaching, he'd go up there and he'd copy his notes into his Bible. Somebody asked this guy a question. He's, he opened it up, and here's all this, some other preacher's notes in his interleaf Bible. And he goes, there's the answer. The guy said, well, what does it say? Well, there it is. <laughs> you know what his problem was? He wasn't training. He wasn't training himself. Guys, memorizing Scripture isn't magic. You know, we say I'm memorizing Scripture because the Bible says, I, thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against God. Hey, guys, don't we say this, don't miss heaven by 18 inches? Don't get it in your head, but not your heart. And you don't memorize with your heart. You memorize with your head. So memorizing Scripture, memorize all that you can, but that, doesn't, that is not hiding it in your heart. That's hiding it in your head. But it's good because it may help you when you're talking to some Jehovah Witness. It may help you talking to some Mormon. It may help you talking to some atheist. You say, what do you do? You take that Scripture out and you slash them to pieces. You need to train. You need to know your weapon. Uh, you ready for this? You know what guys in the military do? Work with guys they don't like. Man, I am telling you, I've never seen a bunch of people. I don't understand how Christians can eat and suck their thumb at the same time. But most of them manage. They can talk and suck their thumb at the same time. And you know what I'm going to tell you? I'm going to tell you that, that, that we get to our, I don't like him. I don't like her. Who said you had to like him? I don't know if there's any guys here that were in the military. And I don't know if there's any guys here that were in combat. But I will guarantee you, you find guys that have been in the military and ask them if they served on a ship or they served on a, on a, as a crew chief or a crewman on an aircraft uh, or maintenance of some kind or they're in a, in a military or a, a frontline combat in, uh, 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 unit, ask them if there were guys that they worked side by side in unison with that they didn't like. If you think that every guy in the military likes every guy in the military, we don't let those kind of guys in our military. <laughs> Oh, I like him. You know? yeah. <laughs> Sit on the bomb and watch what happens. <laughs>
You talk to guys that have been in the military, you know what you'll find out? Those guys get in combat and the guy that they didn't like saved their life. You know, I say it this way, in our, in our military, <clears throat> you know, we've got the Air Force, we've got the Army, we've got the Marines, we've got the Navy, basically, but um, um, Marines and, and Navy guys are always going head to head. And, and here's what will happen, you know, and of course this is what happens, so I'm going to give you the scenario as it is. This, uh, this, uh, this Marine, you know, will be, will be uh, sitting at a bar, and this Navy guy dressed like a sailor, I mean, Marines make fun of of sailor outfits like it's something you put on a kid that's four but not on a grown-up. And the sailor walked down and sit at the end of the bar. And the marina looked down and go, hey, bartender, I didn't know you served squids. And the Navy guy go, hey, bartender, who said that? Not that guy down there who's shaped, whose head is shaped like a jar. <laughs> and inside of five minutes, these guys are throwing each other around the bar. I had a friend of mine, he was in Marine Corps. And he said, he said, we had this little black guy, and he said, this guy was tough. He was muscle, and he was tough. And he said, four of us Marines were arguing at a bar one day with four guys that were in the Navy. And he said, <clears throat> he said, my black friend finally had enough of it. He said, he jumped up on the table and went, oh, yeah! And he said, the kick was, he didn't even know any karate. <laughs> but the sailor that stood up did. <laughs> he said, this guy walked up here and he sliced him and diced him. <laughs> I mean, he just, I mean, they, he looked like Beetle Bailey after Sergeant Snorkel got done with him. <clears throat> you know what we Christians miss? That Marine and that, that sailor will throw each other around that bar. You know what you think? You think it's because they hate each other. No, they both think they're the best. But tomorrow that Marine will give his life for that sailor. Or that sailor will give his life for that Marine. You know what our problem is? We won't even work with somebody we don't like. Guys, I, we, my wife and I support missionaries on a regular basis. I support guys I don't even like. I mean, they say, oh, who are they? Whoa, whoa, whoa. I didn't say I talk about guys I didn't like. I said I support guys I don't like. You say, why? Because they're doing something for God. Because they're in the military, and I'm going to help them every way I can. But I don't like them. And I never say a bad word about them. And when somebody mentions their name, you know what I say? It's a good missionary. You ought to support them. You know what our problem is? If we don't like somebody, we not only don't work with them, we have to kill them. Isn't that right? That is exactly what we do. <clears throat> you better understand something. That, that, and that's why some of you probably would do well never to get in the Lord's army because you can't stand to work with somebody you don't like. You can't bring yourself to work with somebody. You can't bring yourself to say something good about somebody that you don't like. Just because you don't like them, just because I don't like them, doesn't mean they're bad. And maybe our opinion of them, our low opinion of them is accurate. But I got news for you guys. Think of somebody in the ministry who you think should not be in the ministry. Think of somebody else. <clears throat> but anyway, I mean, you know, get a second choice there. But um, uh, you th hey, think of some, some, some preacher who you think is a crook. Think of some preacher who you think is dishonest. Think of some preacher you don't like his attitude. Think of some preacher that, that you just don't think should be in the military. I'm going to tell you, when you get to heaven, you're going to find somebody there because of them. Mention that guy's name to somebody, and you know what somebody's going to say? He led me to Christ. That guy kept my wife and I from getting divorced. That guy got our son out of jail. That guy got our, our daughter living for God. Amen. And then you're going to kill him? You say, hey, if you, can't, if you don't like him, stay away from him. Just don't, just, don't, just don't ask him out for a burger. But you have to find out that when you're in the military, you're going to work with people that you don't like. If you want to prepare for battle, get, be ready for battle. Now, are you ready for this? Go make trouble for the devil. Check this out if you want. <clears throat> I don't know how many pastors we have here and how many more will be here. Ask a pastor who has given you more grief in, in, the, in the years of your ministry. I will guarantee you nine out of ten problems they have had, in, that, that battles that they have had have been because of Christians, not the lost world. 